Hi everybody, this is Amy Hager and I am just eating papayas. And even though I have all these awesome papaya trees behind me, I am still eating papayas from the grocery store. So uh, when I buy the papayas, I'm buying them so, though, so that they are, you know, almost yellow. I buy the ones with the most yellow and I don't care what size it is, just because I know those ones will ripen up a little bit more than the other ones when I leave them sit on my counter to ripen up all the way. Uh, I love to eat them when they're warm. Uh, it just tastes a lot better. Um, and then the reason why I'm not eating all of these trees is because I'm having some kind of a little issue with all the papayas where there is a wasp or something getting inside of them and it's leaving larvae. And there's nothing more disgusting <laughs> than opening up a papaya and seeing worms. So I'm going to show you guys this one. And it's a big problem. I'm not really sure what to do about it. You can see that white little worm right there. It's a little worm. He's in there. Um, I know I've read some things where they said you can bag them. I can bag my papayas to make sure that this little is a wasp that's getting in here. Um, do you see that little wasp or that larvae right there on the end? Yucky! Um, so it just really makes me um, think about farmers, you know, when you have a crop and you might be um, growing things and how important it is to actually make sure that your crop yields uh, food and it's okay, that it's good inside. Um, you know, I'm from Chicago. I lived in the city for 10 plus years of my life and I was not raised on a farm <laughs> and uh, I came out to Florida thinking oh I'm just gonna make this fruit forest I'm gonna grow some guard you know garden vegetables and it's gonna be easy and uh, it was not easy <laughs> these papaya trees were actually pretty easy to grow and the first couple like the first season or two was okay they were pretty good um, but after that I started to we started getting the larvae and I'm not sure exactly how they came um, I was getting new trees I did you know I had a friend bring trees over um, I don't know how they got into my yard but somehow they did that's the one of the beautiful things of Florida um, what I heard is that I had to get rid of all of these fruits and I have to like get rid of them so that the larvae is gone so I'm supposed to either throw them in the garbage or compost them or whatever and you know I also heard you can bag the fruit so that uh, you know the wasp can't get inside of them the only problem is my trees are really really tall <laughs> so and papaya trees the roots don't go deep the roots go out so you can't climb a papaya tree it'll just fall over um, what has happened in the past is that the hurricane there's been some hurricanes over here and it has knocked some of these papaya trees down where they have fallen uh, they've gotten broken in half and that was actually a good thing because what ended up happening is that the whole tree just re-blossomed but at a shorter height and um, that was fruit that I could actually get to. Um, some of these other trees, the fruit's just too tall. Um, I need to get a fruit basket or, you know, with a little knife. Um, but even then, they're still kind of to you know, like too tall. Um, so I might, um, one thing I've considered doing, and I haven't done it yet just because I don't have a chainsaw, but is cutting all of these really tall trees um, down in half, and that should help, you know, get rid of all of the byproducts of these little worms that I have um, with all of the fruits in my garden and you know you could tell there's like a little hole here so somehow they're getting into my papayas and destroying my papaya harvest so I'm really really bummed about it I'm gonna open this one up and I'm sure that it's not gonna look pretty oh yeah so these are all the ones from my garden well you can see all those little worms in there um, so yeah, I have to show you the reality of trying to grow your own little fruit forest. I've talked to a fruit farmer, a fruit tree farmer, and you know, you gotta fertilize these trees. You can't just stick them in the ground and think that, you know, you don't have to ever touch them again. You have to fertilize them. They need to be irrigated. It's winter time right now, so, um, it's really dry. This is the dry season. 
and um, yeah, so that's what's going on. So even though I have a lot of papaya trees in my yard, they're not good, at least right now. So in, until I figure out this pest problem, they have been really awesome in the past. And I will tell you this, when they do come out right and um, you know, there's no pest issues with them, they are amazing. Like homegrown papayas are by far the best that I've ever had. Um, so yeah, I still love papayas. Don't let that scare you, but it does, you know, you wonder why, like you never end up seeing any fruit in the stores that look like this. You just wouldn't want to eat fruit anymore. Um, so obviously they're doing a good job at making sure that they are checking all of that stuff. Um, cause you know, these papayas don't have that issue at all. They're actually pretty amazing. So, um, I don't know. Have you guys tried to grow fruit trees at all? And uh, if so, have you run into any issues? And um, yeah, like I I was watching, you know, in the past, I watched a lot of videos on permaculture and I thought, oh my gosh, this is the solution to all our problems. I'm just gonna be self-sustainable, you know, and this is from City Girl, you know, walking around in my concrete jungle in the city, you know, to wanting to come out into a more rural area and get my hands in the dirt and start growing things and just having so much to learn about gardening. Um, I still have so much to learn about gardening and just all the different things uh, with each individual plant. They all have, uh, you know, little things that you can learn about them. Like for example, with tomatoes, you can learn how to sucker your tomatoes. Um, you know, just learning uh, how to get the soil really nice. Um, when I first, <laughs> like last year, I was gardening and I put in all this fresh compost. I was so excited about it. So I had the garden beds filled up with fresh compost. I put in all these seeds and I put them in too early and the, the compost kind of burnt the seeds. So they didn't come up. And I ended up putting brand new seeds in again, like two weeks later. And then all these things started sprouting and I was getting so excited. I'm like, yes, like I figured out how to be a farmer. <laughs> I know how to do this stuff. And I was so excited. And then I had an armadillo running through my garden and, you know, pretty much stepping on all of my baby sprouts. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, like this gardening thing is kind of tricky. So uh, yeah, like I would watch, um, who is it? Is it John Kohler from Growing Your Greens? And I was like, oh, this guy's garden looks amazing. I just want to go outside and eat fresh from the garden. And it is awesome when you can do that. And uh, um, you just have to, in Florida, you have to consider that there's all kinds of different little pests. Um, you know, and, and when I first moved here, I used to want to be on a huge property. I wanted to be on like five, 10 acres. And, and we ended up getting, uh, this property is 0.7 acres. And I'm really glad that we did not get the really large property, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, just because you have to think about all of those things like irrigation and, um, you know, just coming from where I have been, like just being so inexperienced with gardening. Um, I think that it, it was really, uh, you know, good that we ended up with a smaller property. Uh, just, you know, as I feel like honestly, 0.7 acres is a lot to manage for myself and to be working and being a mom and, you know, doing everything else that you have going on in your life. So um, I no longer care about having this huge yard. What I do like about my yard though, is that it's really um, private. Like if you, you can't, I can't really tell. Maybe I'll show you guys around. So if I show you guys um, here, there's a whole bunch of podocarpus trees and it, it goes all the way up and down my whole property line. So there's a little shed there and then you probably can't see. Yeah, and then you can tell if I walk back this way. Um, there's all those podocarpus trees that pretty much cover the whole side of the pool so you can't really see any neighbors over there which is awesome that was the reason why we bought this place and then my other neighbors are way over there well you can kind of see their house but I'm on a hill and my house is um, behind their house a lot there's my little boy hi river show us what you got going on <laughs> 
Yeah. He's such a cutie pie. Love that kid. Oh, this is my mango tree, by the way. So you can tell in my mango tree, I cropped it. Maybe you can see that. I pretty much uh, came in and it's, you know, they take like seven years to fruit. And I cut, I cropped it a couple of times to pretty much keep the tree to grow out so it's more bushy. And um, that way um, I can get to some of the fruit a little bit easier. This is my mulberry tree. My mulberry tree is kind of dormant right now. Well, this tree is one of the best trees I've ever bought. Um, so if I come over here on this side, you can see my neighbor's house is still way up there there <laughs> you know so they can't really see um, my yard too well um, let's see this is my lychee tree which is doing really good this thing looks awesome it hasn't really bloomed yet so I'm excited for that I have a blueberry tree bush over there that I haven't really been watering enough <laughs> it looks kind of sad I just went to a farm and their blueberries looked amazing or at least they are, they're starting to. They're starting to flower a little bit more. So this is my sad little blueberry bush that i got to give it some love. Um, so, yeah. And then behind my house, in the back of my yard, I have a retention pond. And holy cow, like, if you guys ever meditate in my backyard, there are some serious croaking frogs back there. <laughs> it sounds like I'm in a jungle. I should record it sometime for you guys. But this is just ret a retention pond, so, you know, I thought I had alligators or something back there, but I've never seen one. The only thing that I've ever seen in my yard before was a wild pig. I've seen two wild pigs, because across the street is another forest. So this is usually mowed. It's just that right now um, it's filled with water, so we can't get to it. So, yeah. You can see these are more of my papaya trees. This is like a papaya um, pineapple forest. I have a little compost pit right here. And um, this is the tree that I got those papayas from. So it's actually a shorter tree. But this is the tree that I got all those papayas from that had worms inside of it. So, ah, <laughs> just makes me so sad. <laughs> I'm gonna figure this thing out, I swear. The city girl's gonna figure this crap out. So I just wanted to give you the update, let you know how my garden's growing on. And even though I'm in Florida, I'm still buying store-bought papayas. <laughs> so I'm going back into my pool house. And just so you guys know, the mosquitoes are vicious in Florida. So that's why we have a pool house, and most people do that live in Florida that have a pool um, unless you want to get eaten alive um, at nighttime so hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm gonna go back to eating my store-bought papaya yum <laughs> and I'm gonna stay away from my other ones at least for now until I figure out my papaya problem but I just wanted to give you an update on my papayas mm. This one's pretty good. Bye guys, have a good day.